It's a present for you. Come see. As some of you may know, I really love recreating anime and Ghibli-style textures in Substance Painter. Like, really, really, really love doing it. So much, in fact, I created a full course dedicated to teaching you how to make textures like this in the 3D Artist Coloring Book. And today, I wanted to share a bit of my latest tutorial, which I am super excited to announce is officially live as of this morning. This texture is heavily inspired by one of my favorite scenes in Howl's Moving Castle, where Howl surprises Sophie with this beautiful cottage he used to live in when he was a boy. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, this means that this is just a small sample of the full tutorial. And if you want to get the full commentated tutorial, please consider checking out the link in the description. Now let's have some fun. Once you've loaded your basic mesh into Substance Painter and added the image to Pure Ref or whatever you want to use, let's begin texturing by creating the base layer. You can use the color sampler to simply select the color from the actual image itself. Now we can start comfortably building out the grunges and the chips. We're going to be doing this in multiple layers. By looking at our reference image, you can see there's a lot of dark spots and that's what we're gonna make first. So choose a nice dark color, add a black mask and a generator, and then you can add a mask editor and we can start tweaking the values. Make sure to invert the mask and add the texture opacity slider all the way to one. From here, we're going to add a grunge map right onto here and we're going to drag and drop it. Using the global slider, pull it all the way up to one and we can now see the grunge map that we've added. Feel free to experiment with the grunge maps. It took me a few times to pick this one or a few attempts, so you don't have to copy it exactly, just go with what you want. After this, we're gonna add a blur slope to add a nice hand painted feel. So just right click, add filter, add blur slope. Now turn off the roughness and to add a bit of depth to it, just drop the height a little bit, just a tiny bit. And you can see it adds some nice depth. These are gonna be the chips that have fallen out. You can then use the mask settings to adjust it to your liking. Now one of the cool things you can do with Blur Slope is instead of using the default noise that creates the pattern, you can switch to a custom noise. I've already got it set to custom noise here. And then from there you can input other grunge maps or whatever maps you want and that will affect the hand-painted look. I found that this grunge galvanic sand seemed to work pretty well. Now, I'd like to continue to build out our grunge map a little more. You can see in the map, we've got a lot of splotches overall. So we're gonna duplicate the layer we just made and rename it to the second layer so we keep things nice and organized. Now we can go into the mask editor and swap out the grunge map for something else. I found this grunge marble shapes worked really well with the blur filter. And you can then mess with all the settings to get it the way you like it. I ended up removing the position gradient because I didn't want the position of the mesh to affect it. Just make sure to reset your height back to zero because it copied everything from the previous layer and everything's starting to take shape nicely now. Now by using your reference, you can see that there are these really nice greenish yellow accents that have been painted onto the house. So we're gonna do that next. At first, I was gonna create a new layer from scratch, but then I realized that duplicating the layers has been working really well. So I just decided to do that. This is a great way to keep everything nice and consistent. So after duplicating the layer, I don't change the color first, 
I go into the mask editor and then start messing around with some of the grunge maps. I decided to leave this whole section in because you can see me messing around with the different maps and deciding what works best. I then realized that the map I'm currently using is a little too messy and I don't want to mess around with the settings. I'd rather just find something that works a little better. And then this one looks much, much better right off the bat. And I can tell I'm very happy with that right away. Now the great thing about having your reference up on the screen is that you can zoom in onto the mesh that you're creating and compare it side by side. So that's what I'm doing right now. Everything's looking pretty good, so let's move on to the next layer. As I'm building up this grunge mask, I noticed that underneath there's quite a bit of color variation and it's very stained like concrete would be. So I duplicate another one of the bottom layers and get to work on this mask. Now, I want to use a concrete styled grunge map, so I use the search bar to search for concrete to find something that I like. Now this is way too noisy, so I decided to add a blur directional filter to smudge it to give it that hand-painted look again. And as you can see, it's on top of the other textures, so moving it under those layers so that it is under and closer to the base texture will give it a much better look. Feel free to also mess with the opacity as well, just so things aren't too intense. And you can mess with the opacity with all of these layers. While this looks pretty good as its own texture, I don't think it's dead on for the reference image that I'm looking at. A few minutes later. At the end, when I'm done, I carefully inspect my material that I just made and compare it side by side to the reference material. And from here, I end up being pretty happy with it right off the bat. But then again, I've had quite a bit of practice. <laughs> but feel free to spend as much time as you need in this phase to get everything just perfect. This is very important. Now to finish it all off, create a folder and select everything, drag and drop it into the folder, rename it to whatever you want. And then to create a smart material so you can reuse it, just right click and click create smart material and it'll appear in your smart material doc down below where you can reuse it for all of your projects. So you can see this is your smart material doc. Just grab it, drag it into one layer and you're done. And that's pretty much it. I hope you guys learned a lot. I had so much fun making this material. I'm working on another one from Spirited Away that's going to be coming up next. I'm actually really excited for that one too. Thank you for being part of this coloring book community, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.